Hello, this is Richard Murphy. This is the fourth in a series of videos I'm making about tax havens. I've explained that they have one thing in common, which is the provision of secrecy. I've explained that this secrecy is used to abuse regulation. I've explained how we can determine what regulation is being abused. But I think the critical issue that I need to address in this video is why is that harmful? Because at the end of the day, a lot of people say, well, you can cheat and get away with it. What are you worried about? And my answer is, well, I am worried about the fact that people can cheat and get away with it. And there are a number of reasons why that's the case. Let's, to summarize straight away, say that's about the economics of the situation. It's about the law of the situation and it's about democracy. Let's deal with those issues in turn. The economics of the situation. Look, anybody who's studied economics knows that the theory of markets is based upon the idea that there should be something called perfect competition. Markets work when everybody knows what each other is doing. They can therefore work out the relative value of the products that they have to offer the relative price that they need to supply them at and the consumer can decide between them on a fair and even basis and therefore in theory. And I stress this is all theory. The well-being of society is optimised. Now, the reality is that tax havens exist to do something which fundamentally undermines this idea of a fair and efficient market. Because what it supplies is opacity, secrecy. Its whole purpose is to make sure that people do not know what is going on. This is absolutely fundamental to the understanding of why tax havens are harmful. Those who claim that tax havens are the bastions of free market systems where, the, as I've heard it said, the motion of international capitalism is lubricated to make sure that it functions to best effect are frankly talking utter nonsense. Tax havens exist to undermine fair and competitive of markets. What they do is let cheats hide what they're doing from view so that someone somewhere is abused. Now that could be the consumer. We are well aware that a lot of products are sold from tax havens without recourse. It's very difficult to go back and claim your money back, for example, because you can't even identify who sold you the product. But there's also, and very critically, two other forms of abuse in economic terms that take place. One is that the person in the tax haven may not be paying tax and the person who they're competing with in a fair and open market is paying tax and therefore an unfair competitive advantage is given to the tax haven cheat and that undermines the long-term effectiveness of markets and fair and stable situations in societies which are dependent upon those markets. And secondly, there's of course regulatory abuse. Now, regulation exists to protect us. I know it's very trendy to say that oh, health and safety is such a terrible thing, it's such a burden. Uh, no, it isn't. When I go out and want to buy a cup of coffee in a cafe, I want to know that that place is regulated, supply products which have been properly tested, that are safe for me to consume, and it itself is checked to make sure that it is hygienic and under control. Why wouldn't I? That is about literally my health and safety. And I want to know that I can go to a place and enjoy it without having to worry myself about doing all those checks. So the system of regulation which exists within society is by and large, and yeah, we can all find a stupid one, but by and large, that system is put in place to protect us. If people use tax havens to undermine it, they are again securing an unfair competitive advantage. They're not paying their way by sharing the cost of ensuring that they're regulated but they may also simply be abusing you by supplying you with an unsafe product. And very large parts of the criminal network of the world use tax havens for this reason to supply, for example, counterfeit goods, which are very often dangerous and you don't know, but actually they have flowed through such a place. So the economic harm is very significant. So too is the legal harm. 
Our societies are dependent upon compliance with the rule of law. And tax havens exist to undermine the rule of law. Now, if we think that being a good law-abiding citizen is not just something we do because, well, we don't want to be caught, but actually because it's for the benefit of all of us that we basically comply with the rules. And glaringly, obviously, that is true. Try driving down the wrong side of the road for very long and you'll quickly find out how important compliance with the rule of law is. If that rule of law is fundamental to making our society work, having these places exist that basically have set out to undermine the rule of law in our country, well, is pretty much an affront to everything that our society should stand for. So why are we letting them get away with it? And why are we letting large firms of accountants, banks, lawyers, all with names that we could identify in very many cases, operate from these places in ways that do undermine the rule of law. Let me come to the third problem. That is democracy. In a democracy, and there is no such thing as a perfect democracy, and I'm well aware of it, but in a democracy, if things work reasonably well, people go to a ballot box, choose a political party to govern them, and that political party will government with the consent of all in the population to deliver policies that have been chosen by a majority, somehow defined, to ensure that well-being is delivered to as many as possible, again, as the voters and that political party see it. But remember what a tax haven exists to do. It exists to deny tax revenues to a government. Now, I'm well aware that tax does not directly fund government spending. I'm equally well aware that unless there is a well-functioning tax system within a country, it is impossible for a government to deliver its economic, social and other policies because they're undermined by their inability to control the macroeconomy and the extent of corruption, inflation and other things that undermine their policies. So tax havens basically exist to undermine the democratic will of people in countries that have democratic systems. And they're doing it blatantly. This is their whole purpose for being. Should we accept that these places have that right to undermine the law of another country and its choices? My suggestion is no, we should not accept that. That is not what should be happening. My belief is that we should now be challenging these places because their activities threatening the democratic status of countries is unacceptable. These are the harms that tax havens deliver and I believe it's time we said no more. We've had enough of them. That threat to our economies, our rule of law and our democracies is unacceptable. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in what I've been saying in this video, please subscribe. There is a button below the viewing screen. If you're interested in what I have to say on Twitter, I'm at Richard J. Murphy on that medium. If you want to look at my blog, that's taxresearch.org.uk. And we have a Facebook page as well, Richard J. Murphy. So one of those things will get you more information on what this video series is about. And I hope I'll see you again soon.